Hi, and welcome to this theater talk for year three of the Refocus Project. My name is Savan Tiwari, I use they, them pronouns, and I'm a teaching artist here at Roundabout Theater Company. I'm so excited to be here today. Today we're gonna to be talking with Kalina Ko, our literary associate, as well as Gavin Trinidad, community engagement associate over at New York Theater Workshop, as well as a reader for this year. For year three of the Refocus Project, we focused on Asian American and Pacific Islander playwrights of the 20th and 21st century. We held readings in the spring of 2023, and those will be available on our website starting October 23rd. And now our interviews with Kalina and Gavin. Hi, Kalina. Hi. How are you today? I'm good, how are you? I'm amazing. So could you introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, um, so I'm Kalina, she, her pronouns. I'm Roundabout's literary associate, um, and I also work with my theater company's Writers Lab as their co-coordinator. Amazing. Uh, could you give a little context as to what the Refocus Project is, maybe for people at home who haven't heard about it yet? Yeah, definitely. So Roundabout, as you know, does a lot of revivals. Um, and a few years back, we were like, what if we used our powers for good and thought critically about sort of what revivals we were putting on and, and who we were putting on stage and whose plays we were doing. Um, and so we were trying to think about who had been left out of the canon and whose plays just didn't get the life that they deserved. Um, and so that sort of birthed the Refocus Project, where each year, in the three years that we've done it, we've spent a year focusing on playwrights of a specific identity and trying to identify plays that, you know, in their time should have gotten a revival or should have gotten a, a Broadway production or should have gotten a bigger life, but didn't because of the playwrights' backgrounds or the content they were writing about or maybe the producers wanted them to change something. Um, and so this year, we focused on AAPI playwrights, um, specifically of the 20th and very early 21st century, um, and found some plays that we thought should be in the canon and uh, should get a second life, and did four readings of four of the plays, and then also wrote some accompanying essays for four other plays that we thought should be uplifted. Amazing. Yeah, thinking back on when I was like coming up in theater, I think I could maybe name like two or three plays yeah. by Asian playwrights, they're really hard to come by in the canon. Yeah. So when it came to having to then find I'll them find for this year, them. how how did you go about that? Like, where do you even start? Yeah, it definitely felt like a journey through like archives and libraries and I was like diving into the past. Um, I think a lot of it was, there are a lot of resources in the New York Public Library and there's this like really beautiful, there was a beautiful movement in like the 80s and 90s to publish anthologies of plays. And so there are actually quite a few API play anthologies um, that we started with. Um, but then of course we wanted plays that were like earlier than the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. And so we were digging through like New York Public Library resources and archives and, and going to like the archives of theater companies. Um, we were in contact with a couple of theater companies that worked regionally because so many API communities grew like regionally in like California and, and Hawaii. It makes so, sense, sort of those concentrations. Yeah, yep. just that's where the people were. So, <laughs> um, so we reached out to East West Players in California, which I think is the longest running theater, API theater company in the country. Wow. Um, and they just they just like had scripts in like their basement and, and just like old paper scripts um, that we reached out to them about getting copies of. Um, and we also worked with Kumukahua Theater in Hawaii. Um, they're one of the like biggest Hawaiian theater companies and, and had a lot of titles and playwrights who had been produced prolifically in the, the islands but hadn't really made it to the mainland. Um, so we were really in, in touch with those two folks. And then there was also a really beautiful archive in uh, Massachusetts at UMass Amherst, um, mm -hmm. Roberta Uno, uh, is a histor theater historian who focused a lot on API theater and built up this like beautiful collection of her students' plays and also folks that she knew. And so UMass Amherst, their librarians also just like had all of these resources of scripts that they were willing to send and scan. And so it was just like a journey of us going to libraries and looking through like manuscripts and papers and using our phones to scan things and reading a bunch of stuff. How many plays would you say you ended up with by the time you were all done? We had about, we had like nearly 300 titles, but we couldn't find scripts for all of them. So it ended up being like 150 scripts, I think, to 200 maybe. <laughs> 150. Yeah. Yeah. And so we ended up on 24, essentially. Yeah. We had our four stage readings, the four plays that we highlighted in collaboration with the Mai Writers Lab, mm -hmm. and then also our 16 plays on our recommended reading list. Yeah. Um, which is kind of a first, we've never really had that many plays for a refocus year. Yeah. So how did we go about <laughs> narrowing 150, 150 down to that 24? Yeah. So it was kind of our way to be like, 
we don't want to pick just four. <laughs> <laughs> and in past years, we've also done a recommended reading list of, of just like all the extra plays that we've loved and, and mm -hmm. didn't get to elevate. Um, but this is the first year where we did like a separate four um, essay series. And so it was, yeah, it was really just us being like, we don't, we don't want to choose, we don't <laughs> want to define. Um, the like big question was, it was both a question of like quality of script, which many of them, many more than 24 were excellent quality scripts and, and wonderful plays. Um, but there was also a question of like, what does AAPI mean? Because mm -hmm. I think in putting out this list and in producing these plays, Roundabout is both, you know, we're like conforming to the definition of AAPI, but also defining it in mm -hmm. some ways. And so we wanted to be really specific about what we were encapsulating. Um, and as you know, AAPI is such a broad category. It's like, Absolutely, I don't, I don't yeah. know if that, either of us have, a, <laughs> have a, like a strong definition. And so we were trying to make sure that we had a, like a breadth of work that was representative of a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different experiences. Um, and also we encapsulated a couple different like aesthetics and, and styles and theatrical styles. What we've ended up focusing on sort of in our decision making process was partially like, what is a good script and what is mm -hmm. telling a good story? What, what still feels relevant to us today? I think mm -hmm. in thinking about revivals, there's always a question of, does this still resonate with audiences today? And you know, it doesn't have to be like explicitly political or, or like, about topics we're talking about today, but is there still like something we can gain from it as an audience today? Thinking about what what does like telling an API story really mean, okay. um, and whether it's doing that, whether it feels like in service of of API folks in theater, um, and then the sort of fourth criteria that we put on to sort of help narrow things down a little bit was thinking about whether it was something we could imagine being staged at Roundabout. We ended up highlighting four plays specifically on our Roundabout stage a fully produced staged reading. Those four were Olena Iwi, or Bones Will Live by Victoria Nalani Nubiel, Chaos Theory by Anurag Paul, Big Hunk of Burning Love by Prince Gomal Villas, and Tea by Valina Hasu Houston. Um, what do you remember from the readings? Were there any highlights for you? Yeah, um, I mean, they were all excellent and so different in mm -hmm. really lovely ways. Um, I think I was like most surprised, relieved by the fact that they like really sang on stage in a way. And I think I think the audiences really responded well to all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and they were also distinct. Olena Ivy, The Bones Will Live is one of my favorites, partially because I got to work on it and I got to like be in the room and like talk with the actors. And also because it's like- Yeah, you were production dramaturg on that, I was production that, dramaturg right? on it, yeah. yeah. Um, and also because I think it's such a beautiful marriage of like this like incredibly timely, hard hitting topic about like bone repatriation and like thinking about bone theft of like indigenous bone theft from like anthropologists and and now trying to repatriate those bones and bring them back home. Um, but told in kind of like a, like a buddy comedy like kind of way. And so I think it was like a really lovely marriage of like tone and content of like keeping it light and keeping it fun, but still conveying some pretty intense topics. Yeah. And it was wonderful watching the audience sort of switch back and forth. I remember it. everyone too. was laughing so much. It's, yeah. It was, I knew it was funny, but then, then watching it on stage, like, it just, yeah. it was electric. Yeah, <laughs> it was beautiful. And then of course, tea? there's tea. Your favorite. Oh, I loved it so much. I know. What was that like? It was the first play we chose. Wow, really? Yeah, I know. We were reading all these plays and then we got to it and all of us read and we were like, well, this has to be in it. This this like has to be one of the plays. Um, and so it was the first one we chose and it just felt right for mm -hmm. what we were doing. It's like a group of Japanese war brides in Junction City, Kansas. Um, and they come together and they're all from like different walks of life in, from, in Japan. They were all mm -hmm. from such vastly different experiences and like locations even and family backgrounds. To have five unique portrayals of an Asian American woman on stage at it's one time is unique in itself. Special. To have five Japanese war brides, yeah. <laughs> middle-aged Japanese women, yeah. and they all be so distinctly different. Yeah. What a, like, what a treat. Yeah, it's just such a lovely ensemble piece too. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember thinking when I was reading it, I was like, oh, I wish I'd been taught this in, in like high school or college because it's also like, there's such rich history here mm -hmm. that I like could have like, researched and looked into and, and examined. Um, yeah, that's a really special piece to my heart too. I really love it. Do you think there's any plays for Refugee Focus this year that you see maybe being produced by Roundabout? We obviously have yeah. Home coming up this season, yes. which started as a Refocus play. Right, yeah, so yeah, the goal is to get one or two or all of these plays onto our stage at least, if mm -hmm. not other people's stages. Um, and so Home being one is really exciting. I would love to see T 
be done. I would also love to see tea. Hello, um, I would love to see tea. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I would love tea to be performed. And then Ola na Evie, I think, is so resonant. I mean, it's about museums mm -hmm. and it's about repatriation. And I think so many of our audiences would resonate with that, um, especially with current conversations about like these conversations are still happening. Yeah. We're still talking about bone theft and artifact We're theft. We're museums in general. And exactly, their ownership of their and things. ownership. And so I think that would just be a really, and also current conversations about Hawaii and sort of mm -hmm. the, the horrible fires that have happened there and, and what that whole relationship is. I think that play just does a really good job of balancing levity while also addressing this topic. And so I, I would love to see that piece too, if Amazing. I could pick two. Yes, <laughs> but, that would be so exciting. Well, thank yeah. you, Kalina. Thank, thank you, you for speaking with me today. You've given us so much to think about. Thank you for sharing about process. I'm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. To view our readings, read our essays we wrote in collaboration with the Mai Writers Lab, and to view our recommended reading list, head over to roundabouttheater.org refocus. Enjoy.